Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel, thanks for joining today. Today's episode, we're going to install a light bar. Now this one here is the creme de la creme, it's the Putco LED blade light bar. It is probably one of the better ones on the market, at least one of the best ones that I've found. We're going to install it today on my 2021 GMC Sierra AT4. We don't have to take off the tailgate, but we're going to in today's video because I've got an old, cheap, crappy, light bar on there that started to fail, but we'll get into that later. Let's go. All right, before we get into the specifics of the install, let's look at that old light strip. So the light strip that I have here, I'll hit unlock so you can see it better. You can see it right there. All the white LEDs work, but the red ones, I had two burn out within the first year. They're right in this area here. I'll hit lock again, it's gonna honk the horn. But you can see right there, there's a couple missing. I'll do it one more time. There you go. So as soon as those bulbs had burnt out, it started creating electrical errors on the uh, dash in the truck. Like I had a burnt out signal light or something. Clearly I didn't, but I had a problem with this section of the light strip. So when you buy a cheap light strip, it's probably going to burn out and cause problems for you, especially with some of these newer model vehicles because they are so sensitive when it comes to their electrical systems, which brings me to my next point in the video. Now you might be a light strip installation expert and that's okay. So you're well aware that in some vehicles, I'll emphasize some, you can tap into the back of the seven pin trailer harness. This kit comes with everything you need to do the wire taps in behind and make the proper connections for each of the feeds. Or you might have a flat four connection. I don't because I have these uh, external camera ports here, but you can always get an adapter with one. I don't want wiring on the outside of my vehicle. That's not me. But for this truck specifically and some others like it, they recommend a plug and play harness, which I already own and I installed when I did this light bar. Initially I didn't, I was gonna tap into these things and I ran into all kinds of problems with electrical issues because the trailer sensing features that a truck like this one has, just one manipulation of a wire or tying into one tail light versus the other or tying into one of these harnesses, it sensed that that was happening and it started thinking that a trailer was partially connected and it was just a big headache. So once I got that harness, and I'm sorry it's already installed, but essentially you just unhook the harness that's there. You put this one in line, make the connections, very simple to do. And then it gives you a flat four connection like this to plug your light bar in. I've already pulled this all down. So that's why you can see it right now because I'm preparing to take the old light strip off. So let's take this tailgate off. Let's get this old light strip off and then let's decide how we're gonna mount this new light bar. Okay, so we do need to remove the tailgate, but many of you may have technology in your tailgate, which means there's a harness attached. So that's what we're gonna need to disconnect first. But before we do that, we gotta make sure the tailgate's open because if I go and undo the harness that we're gonna have to fish through the body here, and then I go to try to open my tailgate, I can't. Okay, so the very first thing you wanna do is make sure your tailgate is in the open position so you're able to get to those electronics. It's open. Let me take you under the truck and I'll show you where the harness is and how to unclip all of that. Follow the harness through the body right in the center and it should bring you to this large plug and camera plug. On the back of the large plug, you'll see there's a tab you can release to get the large plug off for better access. Starting with the camera plug, you wanna make sure the red tab is pulled down. Then you should be able to squeeze it, pull it out, disconnect it fairly easily. Now for the large plug, there's also a red tab. It's harder to see. It's behind this large gray clasp. That also has to be shifted away from the plug. You might wanna Pull the whole harness off from the tab on the back so you have better accessibility. Once the red tab is pulled out, you can pull down on the gray clasp and release the large plug and you should have everything detached and be ready to go. Okay, to take off the tailgate, it's actually pretty heavy and it's a little more involved than your typical tailgate. So we already talked about fishing the wiring harness out. There's a big opening here and you're gonna have to account for pulling that out, but you probably wanna have at least two people working on this. You do need to undo these supports. It's a 13 millimeter. Pull those bolts out, but remember your tailgate then is gonna rest on the bumper unless you're holding it. So you might wanna put a pad on the bumper or something like that, or put a table out here or something. 
but here's where it gets a little different. So normally you would move this to a 45, you would see that notch line up and you would be able to pop the tailgate out. You can still do that on this side, the passenger side, but on the driver's side, only once you have the passenger side out, you need to almost put it in the closed position because if you look closely, this attachment here is vertical and it doesn't move when you move the tailgate, it stays vertical. So you have to be in this position, right about there where it's about to latch and pull it out. And again, that's only gonna work when this side's out. So if you wanna do this a little easier, get yourself some help. So I'm gonna do the steps that I just outlined. I'm gonna unhook these. I'm gonna make sure this is supported or something's on the bumper so it's not gonna get scratched or dented. Then I'm gonna lift it up into a 45 and I'm gonna pull this end out. And then I'm gonna get somebody to hold this end, maybe my camera person, and then I'm gonna to go to this end. I'm gonna get the tailgate almost closed. They're still gonna be holding the back end here. I'm gonna be holding it here and I'm gonna pull it out. To do it as one person, it's possible but it's not easy and you might damage something. So let's see if we can get this done. All right, now we have the tailgate out of the way, as you saw. I said this needs to be almost closed. The proper angle for the tailgate is actually about 80 degrees. I was fighting it a little too hard when it was almost closed. Once I got it to about here, and you can see the angle of this, it is off just a little bit. The tailgate pushed right out, so we're good. Now let's take this old light bar off, but before I remove it, and right now there is adhesive behind it all the way, so I might have to get a heat gun out. I did use some screws on the ends to make sure it didn't come off easily. But I am going to just clean the surface a little bit here so I can put some masking tape exactly where it was because I found that this position worked perfectly for placement. So if you notice here, right where this starts to bevel in, where the uh, harness goes through, if you follow that line and keep it nice and straight, I think you'll be happy with where it lines up. So I'm gonna try and use the same spot with the new light bar, but first we gotta get this one off. We got that off relatively easy. Let's do a comparison of the light strips. So I actually have a little bit of moisture there on the inside. And look at how far apart all the LEDs are. The difference with the new one is these are cob or chip on board um, LED array. So look how tightly packed they are together. They can fit so many more in there. And you can see where the brake is here for the left and right turn signal but when we have our brake lights on or our running lights, that should be one continuous looking bar, which is more of that blade look, maybe hence the blade name. The width is relatively the same. This one's a little bit wider, but uh, it should be able to go in the same spot. We just need to decide how to mount it. So the mounting options are as follows. We can use the four clips provided which just clip on the back here, evenly spaced on each side. And we can screw them in. The screws aren't provided. We could use the same self-tapping screws that I had before for the brackets that were here, but I'd have to put new holes. Or we can put adhesive on the back, which is provided. So have a good luck. We got this really nice tinted polycarbonate construction, nice one piece, rigid. It's not uh, wrapped up in a coil like that other one. It uh, has a beautiful fit and finish. This should be long lasting. It has a three year warranty, but it does have a very, very obnoxiously long set of cables 
because it will work for a multitude of installations. I don't need this much cable, so we're gonna end up you know, wrapping it all up in a, in a cable tie underneath, um, but it's all there. Now, it does come with a fuse already in here, but it comes with an extra one as well. This is a waterproof fuse housing. I tried pulling it off by hand, I couldn't do it. I had to pop it open with the screwdriver. I wanted to verify there was a fuse in there and there already is, but this isn't something you're just changing on the side of the road. You need some tools just to open it up. So that's sealed very, very well. There's some heat shrink tubing on each end of the harness here. So if you were to um, splice it for various installations, they've already included a sleeve here to tap in because some installations require you to hook up a power wire directly to the battery and then this will actually act as a relay, so less power is going through it all the time. But in our case, like I said, I'm using the plug and play blade harness made by Putco that's already installed. So all I need to do is decide how to mount this. And I've decided I'm going to use screws and make this stay there because I'm hoping this thing never breaks down on me. And then I have, never have to worry about this peeling off or changing it out or reattaching it. And then all of this wiring is going to go down this cavity here and then it's going to come back in this region and we're going to make sure that it's all covered in wire loom, cable tied nice and neat and then tucked up out of the way so it's away from as much mud and snow and water and that type of thing. So uh, let's clean this up a little better and then let's find where we're going to mount this. Okay, everything is in place. As you can see, we got nice straight lines and contact. I put some adhesive on the back of these just to hold them in place before I drill the holes. But what you're gonna wanna do is remember to fish this up through this bottom gap because this big box that's on here, it probably won't fit through there. So we gotta come up through the bottom and then clip everything in. Okay, before I put the tailgate on, I'm just going to disconnect the old light bar. We're going to need this backup wire um, for this harness as well. So I'm just gonna give myself some extra length, even though I'll probably tap it in over here. But good riddance to that piece. We'll drop this down. And we'll do all of our connections after we put the tailgate back on. Okay, I'm very glad that I chose to mount it in the same spot. So if you look in here, you can probably see where the bar is mounted. We got these mounts here and they just barely clear where the tailgate skin comes in. So if anything, if you take reference from where I installed mine, you wanna go that low or just maybe an eighth of an inch lower. Mine just scrapes through, like just. So it's almost too close for comfort but uh, I'm feeling it's gonna be okay, but just maybe take that guidance to heart if you're doing it on the same type of vehicle. Okay, I just gotta connect everything underneath. Really, it's the reverse of what you saw with taking everything apart, except I do need to uh, tap this wire into that backup part of the plug and play harness that I already have installed. And then it's a matter of plugging this in, cleaning everything up nice and neat, tucking it up there nicely. That's gonna to be tough to film, but I think you get the gist of it because you saw how it was all taken apart. And then we will turn it on and we'll have a look. Now I've decided there's so much wire that popping this tail light out makes a lot more sense to take all of this excess if you don't feel like cutting it up. And then you can tuck it all in here, strap it in, and then you can just run the wires that you need a little ways through to connect to that harness. So at least that's what I'm going to do. You may have a differing opinion. All right, you probably noticed the scenery changed a little bit. I got everything installed, so that's ready to go. But it was snowing outside and I had to move the vehicles in. So it's actually the next day. We're continuing the video. 
I'm going to take it outside and do some comparisons for you. You probably noticed though on the side of the screen here, we got my BMW M4. I'm getting ready to wrap it. I just can't decide between these two colors. I think they both have their benefits. There is a poll on the community page on my YouTube channel if you want to vote. Right now, Superhero Blue is winning by one or two percent more than the Joker Purple. Again, I think both uh, will look pretty good and they'll be unique because they have multi colors to them. They're not just a solid gloss blue or a solid purple. But uh, I'd be curious to see what you think. Anyway, we're going to do some comparisons on the lighting of the truck. We're going to show just the backup lights. We're going to show with the light bar added and we're going to show with that Boost Auto All Lights mod that will show the cargo light as well as the tailgate light all at the same time. And not only are we going to look at it from your perspective through the camera, we're going to look at it through the rear view camera mirror in the truck as well as the infotainment screen. So let's go. You have it we did some comparisons i think it looks incredible i'm very impressed with this product this is not a sponsored video i picked this out it is more on the costly side but i think it's going to be a very long lasting investment i definitely recommend it anyway i'll leave the part number for this as well as the harness that i already had installed in the description below keep in mind things change and they upgrade so go to the website just to be sure you're picking out the right product for you for the truck that you're applying it to but anyway, if you liked today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.